Hello everybody, Common Sense Christianity here. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. You know, Trinitarians love to try and use John 1 to try and prove that Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God back in the Old Testament. But this is simply not what John is saying, right? We can read in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was made Anything that was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shine in the darkness, and the darkness has not, not overcome it. So they will say, there you go, that's the Old Testament. But it's interesting how we see that John shows up here in verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name is John. Okay, so that's really interesting, right? That John would show up in verse 6. He came to, to bear testimony, to bear witness of the light, that all might believe in him, right? He was not the light. So we talk about the light that's coming into the world. They want you to think this is Jesus Christ being born, right? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, this talks about the incarnation. Well, no. Talks about John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. Okay, in the, in the Geneva Bible, we'll say he's better than I. Okay, so he's not witnessing Jesus Christ becoming flesh at the incarnation. John was six months older than Jesus. Okay, he's not baby John talking about, hey, this is he who comes after me, ranks before me, for he was before me. Okay, again, this is the testimony of John. Okay, this is the testimony of John where he talks about, why are you baptizing? I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. The thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to tie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. Okay, Trinitarians don't like to keep reading John 1. They stop up here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. And they skip all the way down, right? After John was testifying, there was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came to testify about the light. Again, John was not six months old testifying about the birth of Jesus. Okay, so we go down here, talks about the thong whose sandals I am not to tie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me for he was before me. Okay, talks about, and John bore witness, I saw the spirit descending as a dove from heaven and it remained on him. So we see... Right, The Spirit descend and remain. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and bore witness that this is God. No, that this is the Son of God. Okay, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, not God the Lamb. Okay, talks about the two disciples heard him say, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them. Why do you seek what do you seek? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, why are they staying? And he said, Come to me. And he said they stayed with him from that hour. It was about the 10th hour. Uh, the first found his brother. He said, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ, not we have found God. He brought them to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, so you are Simon. So Jesus here is accumulating his disciples. Okay. After the baptism, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. Okay. So this is after Galilee. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Right, talking about Jesus as an Israelite, Nathaniel, uh, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Nathaniel says this, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel, not that he's God. So we see in John, the beginning was the Word. Okay, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We see that John shows up in verse six. Right, he came to bear testimony of the light that's coming into the world. Right. And then we see here the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, right? And John testifies about the word right away when the word becomes flesh. Okay, so we have to start off in the first book of the New Testament, which is the book of Matthew. And again, in the, Gen in the Greek, the book of the Genesis of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, go to the Greek. And it talks about here uh, the Genesis of Jesus. And this is how the Genesis, the birth now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way in Greek. It's the Genesis of Jesus. So we have the second Genesis of a man. The first Genesis was Adam, right? In the Old Testament, the beginning of God's creation of mankind was Adam. Now we're told that Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, right? John himself tells us in John, uh, in Revelation 3.14, or I think, it is it Revelation 3.14 or Revelation 
that um, that Jesus Christ is the beginning, right? He's the beginning of God's creation. The beginning of God's creation. So in the beginning was the word, right? This is a new beginning, right? This is a new beginning. The NLT will say the beginning of God's new creation, right? The beginning of God's new creation. So we see that Jesus is the beginning, right? He is the beginning of God's new creation. Colossian talks about Jesus being the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He is the beginning, right? He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Uh, he is the beginning of God's new creation, right? He existed before. <laughs> this is this. Yeah, look at that. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Uh, and then we go down to uh, Colossians 1.16. It says, uh, he is the he is the head of the body. He is the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So who is Jesus? Jesus is the beginning. So in the beginning, when you go to uh, when you go to Matthew, this is talking about this is the first opening statement of the New Testament. Matthew talks about the beginning of Jesus, the beginning of his life. Okay, we have the beginning of Jesus in the genealogy. Then we go to Mark right after the book of Matthew, the next Arthur, and he talks about the beginning of his ministry. The beginning, oh, this is not Mark 1. Let's go to Mark 1. The beginning of the ministry of Jesus. The beginning of the gospel. So we have the beginning of Jesus. Then we have the beginning of the gospel. And again, John is testifying. John the baptizer appeared, which matches John 1. There was a man sent from God. His name is John, preaching the good news, right? I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. The thong of his sandals I am not worthy to untie, which matches John 1 after the baptism, right? He's announcing this, or before the baptism, around the baptismal statement, right? I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Exactly the same thing that occurs in John 1. Okay, Jesus of Nazareth comes and was baptized by John in the Jordan. When he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descended on it like a dove. Matches John 1 perfectly. After the baptism, right? The Spirit immediately. So we have John showing up here at the beginning of the gospel. This is the beginning of the gospel. John is preparing the way for the Lord. Remember, God the Father's Spirit came upon Jesus, and Jesus is the temple that God the Father dwelled inside. God was with him, and I'll show you in the book of Acts how this, this comes into completion. So we have John. John is part of the new beginning. Why? Because John is testifying about the word that's coming into the world. The word, I would raise up a prophet, and I will put my words in his mouth. The word is the flesh of Jesus. Jesus begins his ministry after the baptism, which, John, which Acts 10 talks about. So we have the beginning of Jesus in, 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 um, in Matthew. We have the beginning of the gospel. Then we go to uh, the next uh, writer after Mark, and that's Luke. And what does Luke talk about? In his opening statement, Luke in his opening statement talks about the beginning and the witnesses of the word. So we have the beginning and the word in the opening statement of Luke, right? Talks about, just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So in the beginning was the word, just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So we have Matthew, the beginning of Christ. Mark, the beginning of the gospel. In the beginning, the beginning of the gospel. Luke, the beginning and the witnesses of the word. The beginning and the word, right? Then we go to John. Again, go to John right after right after it talks about the beginning of his life, the beginning of the, of the, of the gospel, the beginning of his ministry. Then we go to John, right? Then we go to John. We don't start off in John. We have to find out what the beginning is. We go to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? There was a man sent from God. His name is John. This is why John shows up so, so quickly in verse 6. Right? He comes to testify about the light. Right? This is the same exact thing that talked about in the book of Mark when he's testifying about the light. Whose thongs of sandals I'm not worthy to tie, and the Spirit comes upon him. Remember in Mark 1, the, ba the baptism of Jesus at the beginning of his ministry? So we talk about here, he comes before me of whose thongs I am not worthy to tie, right? Here, uh, uh, Ma, uh, John 1, 27, he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And a spirit descends upon him, exactly the same thing that happened in the book of Mark 1, 
after the baptism, Jesus receives the baptism, the anointing, the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and he says, this is the Son of God. And then he gets his disciples, so on and so forth, right? So Trinitarians want you to go to uh, Old Testament here in John 1. It doesn't flow. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all talk about the beginning of his life and the beginning of his ministry. Then if we go to uh, Acts, Acts 10, we see that uh, Jesus Christ is the Word, and it began after the baptism, which is exactly what Matthew or Mark and uh, John talk about in their chapters, right? So it says here in Acts 10, you know the Word, okay, the Word, which he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace by Jesus Christ. So the Word is Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The Word, which was proclaimed throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. So we have the word, we have Jesus, we have the beginning. It was beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, which is why John shows up in verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. And the whole entire rest of the Testament was talking about the baptism of Jesus when the Holy Spirit came upon him and John testifying about him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power, how he went about. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's the one who's prophesizing. He's the one speaking. He begins his ministry. How he went about doing good and healing all that were pressed by the devil for God was with him. Okay. The word was with God. God was with him. Right. The beginning from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached, preaching the good news. Right, so we have the beginning, we have the word, we go back into Matthew, the beginning of Christ, Mark, the beginning of the gospel, when Jesus was baptized, John is prophesizing that Jesus would be coming into the world, meaning Israel, because again, the cosmos, the whole world has gone after him, right? I have spoken openly to the cosmos, to the world. So he dwelt among them, the Israelites, I have been sent to the lost sheep of Israel, right? This is the world that Jesus is coming into, not that Jesus was being born. Okay, again, the word beginning from Galilee. This is the beginning of the word. The word beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Jesus says, you have been with me from the beginning, right? Who are you? What I have told you from the beginning. Um, here, with me from the beginning. So they had been with Christ from the beginning. You are witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning, right? You have been with me from the beginning. You are witnesses. This matches Luke uh, 1 that talks about the beginning and the witnesses of the word, right? The beginning of the witnesses of the word here. Just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, you have been with me from the beginning. What I have told you from the beginning, right? You see here, what I have told you, I'm typing on my phone. So it's kind of small <laughs> from the beginning. So this is what I have told you from the beginning. And then we can go to 1 John after this and I'll show you here. Who are you? Jesus said to them, even what I have told you from the beginning. Remember, Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He's the beginning of God's new creation. So John is talking about the beginning of his ministry, the beginning of his, of his, you know, he's culminating everything because we see here in, uh, let's go to John 1 and I'll show you some parallels here. We can see in John 1, it talks about light, right? It talks about the light, okay? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. In the Geneva Bible, okay, in the Geneva Bible, it doesn't say he, it says it. All things were made by it and without it was made, that nothing was made. In it was life. So Trinitarians try to switch it to play to play uh, presupposition uh, pony and, and make it Jesus. He was in the beginning with God. No, it was in the beginning with God. Otto, it can be a male, it can be whatever because it's it's personification. Just like in Proverbs 8, we can see that God's wisdom, which is also with God, is not literally a person. It is a, um, a, a personification, right? So we can see in Proverbs 8 and 9 how God's wisdom is with him, right? The wisdom cries and understanding her voice, right? Wisdom cries, understanding her voice on the heights behind her, the way in the path she takes her stand behind the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portal. She cries, she cries. I, wisdom, dwell in prudence. 
Okay, I wisdom dwell with prudence in some translations. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. She's talking here, right? She's talking. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work. Okay, I was set up. This is personification, right? Through Proverbs 9, wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. Is this really a person with God? No, it's not. Okay. So when we read John 1, in the beginning was the word, this is the same type of personification that's used uh, in Proverbs when, when it's Lady Wisdom. And we can see here it talks about, uh, in it was life and the life was the light of men. The light shined in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, his name is John. He came to bear testimony, to bear witness of the light that all might believe. Who was he bearing witness of and when? He was bearing witness of Jesus when Jesus was baptized. Remember, he's coming in is 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 worthy of more uh, uh, whose sandals I am not worthy to tie. So we can see the light and we can see the parallels in the commentary basically of 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. This is basically 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. This is a commentary of, um, of John 1. See here? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Obviously, they did not hear stuff back in the Old Testament. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands. Luke 1, 2, remember? Uh, the word which we have touched, right? Looked upon with our hands concerning the word of life. Okay, again. The life was made manifest and we saw it and to testify it and to proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which was we have seen and heard, which we proclaimed to you so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. Notice the no third person of the Trinity, right? This is the message which you have heard from and proclaimed to you that God is light. Remember John 1. And it was light, and light was the darkness. Uh, light was the light of the world, and the darkness comprehended it not. That God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not according to His truth, do not live according to His truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus, His Son. Okay. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So again, we have the light, we have the darkness, all these things, and it talks about what we have heard from the beginning, what we have seen with our eyes, okay? So this is talking about the, the baptism of Christ when Jesus was ordained, right? He was anointed, and he received the Holy Spirit and went about doing good and preaching, for God was with him. So again, Matthew talks about the beginning of Christ. Mark talks about the beginning of the gospel. Luke talks about the beginning of the witnesses of the word. And John gets into the beginning was the word. And John again, John again, if we keep reading, John talks about, uh, John 1 parallel, parallels uh, 1 John. But again, if we read John here, we go to the opening statement of uh, John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God. We're already told about Jesus Christ being the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He is the beginning, right? He's the beginning of the creation of God. All things were made through Him. Everything was made through the Messiah in the new beginning, right? Because God created everything through His Messiah, meaning because of His Messiah, for His Messiah. That's why Jesus Christ inherits the throne of King David. So there was a man sent from God. His name is John, which would be nonsensical if Matthew starts with the beginning of Christ. Mark talks about the beginning of the gospel. Luke talks about the beginning of the witnesses of the word. And then John's going to go, oh, by the way, back in the Old Testament, in the beginning was the word. No, no. Nowhere in John's gospel does he ever talk about the beginning of Genesis in any beginning. We have two instances only where John is not talking about the beginning of the life of ministry of Christ. And it's the beginning of uh, when Satan was a deceiver from the beginning. We know that Satan was not a deceiver from the beginning of creation, just as his life. So at the life of Satan, he was, a, he was a liar from the beginning. Jesus Christ is the beginning. So this is the beginning of his life and his ministry. That's why John shows up. There was a man sent from God. His name is John. He came to bear witness to the light. He came to bear witness to the light that all might believe in through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness of the light. The light that was coming into the world. Remember, he's coming into the world in Israel. I've been sent to the lost sheep of Israel, the cosmos. Jesus says, I have been sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He goes and dwells among the Israelites, preaching the good news, the gospel, right? He came to his own home and his own people received him not, right? Because the word that was throughout the Old Testament was God the Father's word and they rejected him. So even when God sent the perfect image of himself, the son, 
Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God who, who was representing the Father, the world reject the Father. Because when you reject Jesus, you reject the Father. If they do not listen to you, they do not listen to me. And if they do not listen to me, they do not listen to the one who sent me. Okay? So, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Think about it. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory. Okay, did they behold Jesus' glory when he was incarnate? No. When did the word become flesh? Again, Acts 10, 36 talks about it. The word became flesh when Jesus was baptized and received the anointing. The word, which was proclaimed throughout Judea by Jesus Christ, beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Again, that's why you see John here. There was a man sent from God. Okay, this matches again, whose thong I am not worthy to tie. The sandals I am not worthy to tie. John 1, 27, this matches Mark 1, where it talks about the beginning of the, the gospel, right? Whose thong I am not worthy to tie. We can go right to the beginning of the gospel. The beginning of the gospel, it says right here, uh, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to tie. Um, here, uh, Mark 1, 7. After me comes one who's mightier than I, the thong of sandals I'm not worthy to tie. Again, Jesus was baptized by the, the Holy Spirit and when he came out of the water, the, the Spirit up, descended upon him like a dove in the book of Mark. And when is this? This is the beginning of the gospel. When, when John prophetizes that the one coming after me, I'm not, you know, I'm not worthy to tie his sandals. And then we see the Spirit upon Jesus Christ who's, who's baptized Right, And this flows beautifully exactly with what John talks about. John talks about this exact same thing in John 1. Because if we keep reading, John is testifying about the one. Right, John is testifying there was a man sent from God. He came to, testimo to testify the true light that was coming into the world. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John bore witness to him. Again, John is not bearing witness to the incarnation of Jesus when John was six months old. Okay, Talks about the baptism. It says right here. Uh, in John 1, it says, John 1, uh, 27, He who comes after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, which match exactly with Mark when it talks about the beginning of, uh, of Jesus' gospel. And the next day, this is he who comes after me. He's, he doesn't baptize. Uh, he's going to be baptizing you. And he said he saw the Spirit descend upon Christ like a dove, and it remained on him. It remained on him. And I have seen this and bore witness that this is the Son of God. And finally, in conclusion, again, once again to revisit this, this is when the Word becomes flesh. The Word becomes flesh at the baptism which John preached. That's why, again, John shows up in verse 6 in John 1. John shows up in verse 6 for John 1, which would be nonsensical if Matthew starts with the beginning of Christ. Mark start, starts with the beginning of the gospel. Luke talks about the beginning of the witnesses. And then you have John going in five sentences back in the Old Testament. And then all of a sudden, John shows up in verse 6. It does not work. So we see here, you know the word. So we have the beginning was the word, which he sent to Israel, preaching good news of Jesus, preached by Jesus Christ. He is Lord over all. The word which was proclaimed throughout Judea, again, Throughout Judea, which is the word, the world, he was proclaimed throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism. So when was the beginning and the word? The beginning and the word was proclaimed throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached. Again, that's why John shows up in verse six. There was a man sent from God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. When did the Holy Spirit appear upon Jesus? In John 1. Right below that, like in John 1, 26 or so, when the Spirit descends upon Christ. And in the book of Mark 1, when Jesus was anointed, the Spirit came upon him. This is the beginning of his ministry. Okay, so how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So we have the beginning, we have the Word, and we have the Word was with God. God was with the Word. Okay, very clear, very succinct. The beginning is the beginning of his ministry. You have been with me from the beginning, what I have told you from the beginning, what we have put upon our hands and touched concerning the word of life. Okay, This is the beginning of his life, his ministry. And this is when Jesus Christ begins speaking the word that God told him. I will raise up a prophet. I will put my words in his mouth, the flesh, and he will say everything I've commanded of him. God bless you.